Hello and welcome. I'm Bill Wake. We are working on a program to compare tunes for similarity. And one of the things we're doing is, well, it's what the author calls the conspectus. I'm working on a different name, but it's it's a graph to try and get sort of for a bunch of tunes, what notes did they use? And uh, we've been making progress. We had a, a report that did that basically with text-based strings. And uh, we've recently, well, yesterday we switched it to a grid, which is a Swift UI table sort of construct. And uh, we hard-coded all the sizes because the grid seemed to like it that way, but we're going to try and get it dynamic today. Okay, uh, let's make sure tests run. All right, and let's let's run and see. So we're gonna take this Noskan file that's pretty big. We'll take a default quantizer and here's our view okay so this is measure one quarter note first quarter note measure one second quarter note and so on somebody has six notes in their in their input so i'm not sure what's going on there we did a little work to um give it a different background color so you get a little bit more of a grid view but notice that the, the widths sometimes vary i don't know if any heights vary but the widths certainly do and it's like 12's fatter and 8's fatter than 1, you know. So uh, we can do a little work on that. But the real thing is that uh, we've got this, we've got it hard-coded to say, um, give me 50 measures worth. Okay, and you can see all the last ones are zeros. I think 48, yeah, this one's a 1. So there was somebody that had 48 but then 4950, we don't even have headers for them. They're just not, not in there. Okay, and then this one, also somewhat obnoxious, but uh, it stops at 48.6. Okay. Um, let's see. So I think, well, let's see. I guess I want to start with dealing with this um, this counter issue and the code we got for that let's see I think we're in here yeah so row number 0 through 24 that's sort of true um, there we default show three octaves that's the 7 plus the plane 7 and the 7 minus um, we got the less than and greater than for no, uh, values that are even higher than that and 0 I think I should call it rest or maybe put a little quarter note in there um, it's, it's for ones that have rests at that beat. Okay. Another thing we wish for is sticky headers. You know, I'd like to pin this up to the top, but we took a try and it didn't seem to work. So I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> All right. And, um, but this is the real obnoxious one. Not every song has 50 measures and not every song has six, six beats in a four, four measure. <laughs> uh, clearly not all of them are four, four which maybe means I need another filter that that maybe regularizes something to 4-4 four, four, or 3-4 or something like that. Okay, excuse me. Um, All righty. So the problem here is we we have the information. I mean, stage.table, let's see if we can go there. Yeah, here's note count table. All right. It knows the highest measure and it knows the highest note number. And you would think we could we could ask it those. Um, now the problem is table. What does table got? Well, three dimensional, so it's obnoxious, right? Um, but it's giving us the row is the first one, the measure is the second index, and the note number is the third index. So, I mean, yeah, the the table dot count is is the number of rows. However, I would like to trim that down. Uh, let's see that to do. Um, 
only show the first row with entries to the last row with entries. So we have a lot of zeros. Um, well, five plus is used, but I don't think seven plus, six plus, or greater than are used. Uh, oh, there's a two. Oh, and this shows it too. Okay. Let's see, where's that high note? Six plus, there's a two, two, it's 8.1. Oh, and there is a greater, 11.4. So let's go to 8.1. Well, there's 11.4, 8.1. Okay, well, then that maybe we, I just don't remember if we already did it. <laughs> um, low ones seem more rare. So do we have those? Yeah, we only go to minus three. We don't go to minus two, minus one, zero. So... I think we'll see that there's no minus two, minus one, or less thans. These bottom, next to bottom rows are always zeros. Okay, so we're not enforcing that either. But it, it also means we can't just ask um, which rows are valid. Unfortunately. Let's pull this over. Let's hide that. Okay. Whoops. <coughs> And the thing is with these views, they don't like, they don't like variables. <laughs> um, I would really like to say stage, stage dot table dot highest note. No. Well, those don't count. Um, dot. End index. Oh, I guess I have to reach in and get the table itself. I don't know if I want to do that. He's published private. I don't know if that's reasonable or not. I mean, he's published because if you change table, some of these public things change. Okay. Um, but he's private because nobody should really directly access him, I guess. Okay, but let's let's suppose we had. Hmm. Well, it's there's some back and forth getting these row numbers. I don't know if that's good or not. Let let's just give him a size. Um, table rows. And that is row info dot count, I guess. Let's make that int and table, whoops. Table rows equals row info dot count. Okay, that's how many rows we have. Um, I'm not deriving it either, am I? I don't know if I need to or not. All right, let's try this. Table dot table rows. Are you going to complain? He doesn't like variables, I think. It must be an integer literal. Okay. I, I saw code. I saw sample code that did this, kind of. And they did array.endindex. Okay, so let's let's see if that will work. Um, so in that case, let's take this out. Little experiments here. Problem is, it doesn't help us with our other loops. Okay. I'm going to make that public for now. Table dot, table dot, end index. Are you okay with that? No, he's just as upset. Okay, in a way that's a relief. 
Okay, but what what that tells me is these four eaches that go to a range like this, it's just not going to like. Now, the problem is, or I should say, it might work if all we were doing was accessing the first, the first index. And then, because then it can verify that the index range of table is in the right index range of stage.table. Let's let's see if we can try that. Um, text verbatim. I'll take this one out so it doesn't think he's looking at that. That could be acceptable. No. Um, Stage.table. No, still complaining here. Okay. So whatever I saw must have been, maybe it was an old answer or something. But it's not going to work. Okay, this was six. All right, and this was private. Yeah, I'm hoping publish just means notify when this changes because other stuff is changing. But, um, okay. I tried to find somebody doing for each with two dimensionals. Somebody sold their page, I think. Okay. For each is expanded ghost items. Okay, I'll look at that one. Oh, this is somebody's random answer page. Okay. Um. Getting Chinese or Japanese answers. Probably not in the right place. think well maybe this is saying the thing that makes it impossible with this approach um oh it's me all right um well i think the thing is there's alternative versions of for each that want identifiable arrays with identifiable elements um let's let's go here Now that's not Swift UI. Um, we've had this page open before. <laughs> okay. Um, data ID content, that's possible. But notice it wants random access and it wants a hashable ID. Okay. So. Now you can use self and that might be okay here. I mean, we have this three dimensional thing. It's, it's row number goes to measure, goes to note number, measure number, I guess. Okay. So let's see all alternative, our alternatives, data and content. So data conforms to random access. ID is element ID, content conforms to view and data element is identifiable. Okay, our data elements are probably not identifiable. 
Okay, uh, this one binding across updates based on identity. Key path. Okay, we've used that one before. Random access collection. ID is hashable. Content conforms to view. So I think in theory I could do an array with ID self because they're indexed. If it just iterates over them, rotor content. I don't know what that is. Um, this one binding key path. Chart editable access data. I mean, I think it really wants identifiable stuff is the deal. Um, maybe this is a little better example. Nope, that's the other for each. <coughs> Oh, help if I say Swift UI. Okay. For each data where data is an array. Yeah, so we we have my data it has an ID. Interesting. I don't know where the data is coming. ID is coming from. Is the text? Oh, they're different. Okay. Yeah, because if the if you use the I uh, the text and the text um, is the same, then you've got two things that have the same ID, and that's just bad. Because then Swift gets confused about which one is which, and it just doesn't work. Okay, but we're iterating over the array like that. <sighs> yeah, now this is what we're more likely to try. Take the ID as self. Um, hmm, the problem I have is our, our indexes are um they're unique but the data inside might not be uh, yeah only works because each string is unique that's constant yeah i don't think that was a little too basic array of bindings interesting I think that's a sidebar, but let's see what they're up to there. For each model. This is the binding, okay. Self.items.index. Self.ims index instead of a custom binding. Okay. <sighs> Only works with static content this way. Yeah, that's that's the challenge. So if I uh, view model to view model, use binding array directly by passing in the bindable. Uh, I think this is out of our out of our remit. Right. Lots of people want to index over um, non-variable stuff. Eh. No, that's the wrong for each. Okay. Paul Hudson's site is great, but I can't always find what I'm looking for there. I said Swift UI this time. Okay. Swift UI. Uh, 
Let's try this one. It looks like he's got constant. He's got colors. There's an array. I mean, maybe I should reorganize my my table view. How would that look? Okay, so if, yeah, right now we, we access this. Who does this? I mean, who uses it? Average sync view, average student report, no accountable. Okay, yeah, so it's really only for this purpose. So I guess the... I mean, if we, if we asked, we're being random accessed. I mean, could I, could I just give it the subscript? Hmm, like what if I had something that was a 1D subscript? Then this thing would be... Well, it had to be an array, wouldn't I? Hmm. So I was thinking if I could let you combine these numbers, I know... The maximum rows, I don't know the maximum index until I've seen it. Yeah, the problem is this is the read side. And we go through two phases. We have a populate phase. And in populate, we're incrementing. Um, we're incrementing the counts. Okay. Um, Now, I think the deal is the full reach really wants. What does it want? I mean, it wants a random access collection. What is required to do that? And it's constraints to indices and subscripts. Okay, so what I'm kind of proposing, it's it's sort of a two-level thing. I'm gonna, I'm going to, let's see, increment before I go too far. Okay, increment. It modifies table. Well, here's the core of the increment, right? It it modify it makes a room so it adds you know, array elements if it needs to, and it keeps track of the max measure and note number. But the real thing is it increments. Okay, so it's changing table. Now, can I make this thing? Hmm. See, I can't convince, I mean, I think all I can do is convince it to go zero to n and I don't know if I can I don't know okay so what I'm thinking I could do well one way would be say once I once I've populated, I know the biggest measure number. 
I guess I could worry about the, the six versus four that can be outside of this process. I could have something, a filter that says, make everybody conform to four, four, or, um, you know, cut off any measures of more than four beats or something like that. So I guess I know the number of measures. How's that work? I know the number of rows because that's based on the row headers, which is at least semi-constant. Um, the potential ones are constant. Three octaves, one for greater, one for less, and one for rest. Okay. So the rows aren't bad. I mean, what if what if I made three... What if I pull out these inner tables and this, the first table is the measure of rows and it returns you a measure, uh, it returns you a list of measures. Um, measures. Okay, now I'm wondering if I could do a hash table instead. Would that make things better or worse? <laughs> okay. I mean, it's really, it really is sort of, um, where's the three things? Row number, measure number, note number goes to int. I could keep a hash table on those three things. And it makes some things easier and some things harder. Like if I ask for stuff and it's not there, yeah, like what happens? Okay. Um, all right. So the other alternative is if I break this up. So I say I'm a random access collection and I return to you an array of measures and counts. Okay, so the contents of the outer array, <laughs> um, the, the, the outermost bracket is row number. Okay. And if you, if you give it measure number and note number, it gives you the count. So this is measure row to count. <laughs> um, that type now is that type meaningful i don't know but we're trying to figure out like what's the what's the presentation that makes the job easy for the ui and i think that is helpful because if i'm well if i gave it table I don't know. Let's try this again. Let's make this public. And this is where my Okay, let's say stage dot table dot table. And this is Range event. This is measure note to count. I'm prepared to throw this away. <laughs> okay. Measure note to count. Now the grid row is no it's just not not good all 
I mean, that's the one that's easy, and it does need access to this. But this one... I'm wondering if I can combine these. <laughs> if if each row knew its header and its measure note count, um, I could get those there. Okay, let me take that out tentatively. It's not adding anything to things. Um, oh golly, um... So what was going wrong here? Okay, let's let's design the table at once. I guess I still need to get Okay. Um let's see. Okay. All right. I guess let's see. Is this to do make indices, not fix sides and grid? I think that's what we're really up to. Okay. Um, what I'm thinking. Like, what if we gave note count table? It's got this this table, which is the the low level counts and everything. What if we made a table that was customized? Um, right. I want a table that's that's customized th that the UI is happy to work with. So let's see. Um, I mean, this, this stuff that, and maybe I can even split this out, but the populate like all the populate and increment stuff is producing table. Um, it's producing table and it's producing these counts. Highest measure, highest note number. Now, there may be Hmm. Well, what I'm thinking, these, like, I don't want the five and six if every every number in this column is zeros. That's just boring and it's misleading because I think what's happened is there's probably one song. We're going to find anybody who uses a five or a six. I guess that's a hard way to go. All zeros. Wait. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, it's hard to do visually. We need to do some work on alternate colors or something. Okay. Um, um boy. 
Okay, so if well, what I, what I'm kind of proposing is, gosh, everything in here except subscript, right, is just about focused on creating that table. Yeah, I would say that's true. And the table, nice as it is, is not enough for the UI, right? Because, well, partly the UI wants a little more structured access. And partly the issue is this thing gets constructed a little bit at a time, but it just wants to know it's got this unchanging thing it can look at. I mean, it can change, but not in the middle of looking at it. Okay. Um, so I don't know if I want a different object. Like this, this stuff, producing this table and these values, they're more or less helpful. In the highest measure, we want to know that. Highest note number, we almost want to know that per measure. And then our headers could, could be more dynamic. And if everybody in that column is zero, I guess if everybody in column six is zero and five is zero, there's no reason to show it. Four... Yeah, I don't know. If if every column to the right of you is zero, I don't want to see it. Uh, I don't think that'll be an issue usually. Maybe I, again, maybe I just shouldn't worry about that. If I if I force everything to four four, that always is a four, and this problem kind of goes away. So, um, and I can do that in my quantizer. I could say maximum beats four. And we would we would restrict that, and that would look better. Okay, I don't think that's hard. Um, okay, so what would convert this to something that the view could work with? So the view needs would like to go through and just say, give me every entry in your table in order. And then we could say, oh, my row header is this, and so on. Um, all right, let's make that happen. And I just don't know if, I don't know if I'm, okay, so I'm going to make a different table. This let's make this the count table. I'm just I'm going to put them in the same file for now and I got to keep them straight. Okay. So now I mean when you populate right you you should populate the tune and then and then convert to our new table. Okay, now I want to make sure everybody's the same. Okay, yeah, what I want to do is I still want to access this new table. This, no, I don't. All right, let's... Let's make a new table. I, I think I'm not introducing new stuff just yet. So for what it's worth, um, var table, and its indexes are the rows, and it's a table of Y 
Well, what is it? It's, I don't know if it's a class or struct. Um, let's make it a struct. This is um, measure note to count. Actually, it might be measure to count, measure to note count. Okay, we'll work on names. Okay, so what's this thing got? Well, it's going to have these insights. It's going to have this is this is a given row. Is that worth saying? Maybe this is a count row. Okay, and it's got a header header of string and it's got an array of um, well this is measure to note count, I think. And it's an array of array. No, it's going to be an array of note count. Okay, and Table of count row. Let's start it off empty. All right. Now, every one of these should get an entry in here. Count row has got the measure to note count. Then this has to be um, well, it's got the measure Ooh, the measure number got us there, so it's the, well, let note to count is an array of int. Okay, so I think I got my three levels. Count rows contains array contains array. I mean, that's not so far. Now, I may have to give these things IDs or something to make them all happy. Okay. Um, this should build, should run, everything. Nobody's calling it, so it's no harm. Okay, and I think this is the thing we really want to look at. So let's make that public. Okay. N okay, make sure that builds. Okay, and so if my populate then says build table. Okay, I'm going to have a function up here, build table. Takes nothing. Okay, and his goal is you got a table, a count table here, uh, here, and I want to turn that into one of these. Okay, so I want to say, um, well, I think I want to map I 
want a map count table, right? Okay, so mm, table dot map map and then what I'm gonna do is take an array of array of int and turn it into a note count into a count row. Um, table dot enumerated. And this is in um, inner array in something. Okay. All right. So what's he going to do? Well, this is going to get assigned to count. No. Table equals count table. dot enumerated dot map okay so given every entry here well I need to figure out the row header right that's a string and that's row header sub n let her equal row header sub in. Okay. And then let um, note uh, let measure array equal well we've got to do something with inner okay um, build count row with inner okay whatever that does I don't know am I going too far here and then the result of this is a count row. Return count row. Header is header. And the um, measure to note count is measure array. Okay. Is this, is this obvious? <laughs> Sorry, old math joke. Okay. I suppose I should tell it. So the math professor is going along in his proof and he says, blah, blah, blah. This is obvious. He goes, wait a minute, is this obvious? And then opens up another board and goes and calculates for 10 minutes and comes back and says, yes, it's obvious. And I feel like I'm doing the same to you do here. But anyway. All right, build count row takes array of array of int and it returns a whatever this thing holds, a array of note count. And let's return nothing. Okay, for the moment. Um, I'm feeling like I need to check something. I mean, in the end, we got to make sure this table is right. So I probably should be driving some tests in here. So let's, let's get to note count table tests. I hope I'm not going down a bad path <laughs> okay so um tests
Well, maybe we should test the... One row, one measure, one note. Okay, and... Um... ABC parser create G. Let's just take G. Okay, we create a new account table. We'll create row info. I don't know what row. Oh, okay. Eh, okay. Um. So we populate, and then we want to check that table, table sub row info dot scale root index. So this is a key of G by default, and we got a G note. Um, Well, let's make it table dot table of row scale index. Let row equal that. Okay, so we're we're getting out the one row. I guess what can we assert? I want to assert. Well, for starters, I want to make sure that row dot. Well, let's check row dot header should be one. Uh, let's make that an equal. And row dot measure to note content dot count should be one. And why are you not doing the right thing for me? Um, row dot measure to note count sub zero. What is that? Well, row dot measure should be an array of note counts. And entry zero should be one. Maybe I can shortcut this a little bit. Measure some note count sub zero should equal one. Note count has no subscripts. Value type note count. Oh, do I have to go? Okay. Um. All right, this is going to fail because <laughs> we're not putting anything in there now. Okay, so yeah, we don't have, we just returned empty table, if you recall. All right. Um, where is our build? Okay. So... You're given the array of array of int, and we want to reproduce an array of note count. Uh, 
Okay, so if we take array dot map it to, I probably need the enumerated again. Okay, and I have in, and this is um I'll just say inner again in okay so a note count is that what I want yeah I'm trying to fill this thing in okay All right, so I'm going to map each entry well, I'm going to make a note count. And that's inner. Okay, so I don't think I need the enumerated after all. Okay, because the items we got, they're in array of ints, and that's what we want to put in our note count. Okay, this is easier than I thought. Of course, I'm not passing my test yet, am I? Okay. Hey, all right. So now we can make a more complicated test, but I think... I think we're on track. Okay, so no count tests. Let's let's Okay. Um This is two table. Test um multiple songs to counts okay so our tunes parser dot create first one is G let's take GFED I think I can do this. Let's go see this. Create notes. All right, we're just putting them in a normal structured file, like we're parsing. So that's a good thing for us. Okay, so I can do this. I can go G G. Um, C G. That's one song. And then the next song can be G. I guess I want fewer notes. <laughs> G, 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 F. F, G, G, G. Okay. Now, um, we need the same. This is kind of messy setup, isn't it? Okay, we create the table. That's a good thing. And we create the row info. I think I'll just swap this order. Table's what we most care about. Okay. And then, let's see. Um, maybe I can make these more, I can make, C is complicating. Let's just do this. We'll just work with two notes. Okay. 
So the scale index row in this case is G and plus one um, row G row for F should be this row info dot scale plus one. Okay, so uh, we should be able to get our counts now. Okay, and I'm gonna steal this structure. Uh, we can check. Row G, row G's header. Header should be one. row f dot header should be seven minus because it's the next lower note in the scale before the prime root is the seventh and get your free music lesson here okay now row g measure to note count Zero. So measure zero. Note to count zero. Well, we're not. We're gonna spot check. Okay. Um, measure to note. Sorry. So row G. Measure zero. Note zero should be two. Well, there's only so many of these. Okay. Row G measure one. That's this one. Note one should be one. Row F measure one. Note one should be one as well. And then I think our ending, let's check our ending. Row G, measure one, note three, zero, one, two, three, should be a two. Okay, and then do we ever have FF? Yeah, let's get measure zero, note three. Should both be F. Row measure zero, note three, should be two. Okay, both of them are Fs. I know the assertions are a little hard to stand. I'm also thinking this measure to note count is a little verbose. Maybe it should be just measure dot note, and then that gives you the count. Okay, but let's make sure it passes. <laughs> okay, uh, two is not equal to one. Zero is not equal to one. Okay, so we got a two there. Let's see. Measure zero, note, oh, these are the same. Bro, bro G. Measure, measure one, note one. Oh, did I not count from zero? Sure enough. Too much music. They don't use zeros. I think it was admitted before 
Europeans got comfortable. The notation was invented before Europeans got comfortable with zero. It makes a lot of stuff easy to make off by one errors. Okay. Well, the reassuring thing is there are two at that position, two Gs. Okay. So this should be one each. Let's try again. I hate to argue my way through a test, but I think I did have the numbers wrong. Okay. So everybody should be happy now. Okay. Um, make uh, a separate table. ESL for UI and fill in its counts. Okay, so uh, I think I do want to change those names. Let's just make uh, this measure. And this one note. Excuse me. Okay, let's look at how that reads down here. Row G, measure zero, note zero is two. Okay, that reads much nicer. I could almost come to like that. All right, and everybody should be happy still. It's just a rename. Okay, uh, let's see. So we've been going a while. I think the next step for us is to try and use that structure in this. And hopefully that worked better. <laughs> so let's take a break and we'll come back and integrate our new table structure in here. And then if that works, we're going to have to decide does note count table, uh, like, I don't know. So how, how's that going to work? Is it is it really two glasses or what? Okay, so three or four minutes and see you back then. All right, welcome back. Okay, so here we go. So we want to iterate over note count table dot table. And this thing All right, we made it public. I think because we've got count table is updating, is letting us know when we've updated it. Um, if it changes, hmm. Well, we've got a ways to go here. I I'm gonna. I'll just assume this will work to access it. I, I think maybe we want this thing to be the, the published thing, though. We don't care about any individual updates now because those all happen in one one swoop once. Okay, but the result of that is the thing that we are monitoring. But anyway, so we're going to walk through this dot table. Okay, so my hope is that I can say... <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's let's duplicate it. All right. So this one is stage table table. And what we get from it, <coughs> excuse me, is. Um, No, I don't think that message is quite correct. Correct. This should be a count row.
in there. And then each row, this should be count row dot header. No row number needed. Okay. And then for each hmm. Well, we're going to go through measure. Count row dot. <coughs> Excuse me. I believe this should be measure. Not sure why it's not trying to help me any. Okay, and then this will be a measure. And then this is count row dot measure is an array of note counts. So each of these tables should be a note count. Um, measure dot note count and I guess from there we're getting counts to type binding of C. Um, well, if you're happy with all that, then up till then, let's see if our rows come out at least. Count row conform to identifiable. Yeah, I was wondering if that would have to be true. All right, we can do it. Seems a little costly. I mean, we could, we could use header. We do want those to be unique. All right, but if this is acceptable, then that's worth knowing. Okay, we should get a table of rows, I think. I don't even think we'll have to open a file to see it. There they are. And then the real table, which is all zeros, of course. And huh, yeah, no, no columns at all, but somehow it doesn't. Okay. And I wonder. I mean, those would look better left justified, maybe. But, okay. <clears throat> so, all right. So that part's working. Let's see. What are we... What, what's weird to me on this one is count row dot measures should be an array that is perfectly happy with. All right, let's do this and this. 
And let's just say text. Um, what could I put in there? Measure.count. Now I'm not clear how padded everything is. Okay, now this requires a note count conform to identifiable. Okay, yeah, we sort of had to expect that too. Identifiable and then public lid ID equals UUID. Um, I mean, we're working a little extra hard to create these UUIDs. I don't know. We we probably... I bet we could assign those IDs in a way that made it work based on the index. <clears throat> All right, but we'll, we'll take the cheap, uh, hopefully the easy way out now. Okay. Um, measure... What is measure? Is a note count. And a note count. Okay, we can take measure dot note dot count. All right. Oh, and I see we said note count there. That's not correct. Okay, this may get, may need some data now to be interesting. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's give it that file. Hey, that kind of looks like something. All right, what it, what it does is it tells me my fears are correct. <laughs> um, well, maybe the the table we build doesn't have an entry for every measure and every beat. Now, what the heck is a ten doing there? One dot nine, one dot ten. Oh, I didn't quantize. Gah. Let's quantize. Right. Um, I think what happens is if a tune doesn't have a measure, Let's see, there's that one, there's that one. I'll bet you that's the last non-zero entry in this row. Okay, so that's measure 6.2. 6.2. Uh, I think there's more going on. I think we're gonna have to make sure the measures fill out exactly as many as there are and all that kind of stuff. Um, this is, no, it's not all non-zeros, but I bet, I bet there's a place where, I'll bet you a four is the last one. A lot of zeros. Well, I might lose that bet. One. Okay. Is anything looking right? Okay, zeros and a bunch of ones. A bunch of zeros. Let's see. 2.5 is a four. 
2.5 is a 4 on greater than. Well, there's a lot of zeros. I guess we're saying the first one will be a 4. Well, I may be completely off here. <clears throat> now, I remember the impression that we did have some values that got up there. Is this looking like it used to? 1, 2, 12, 10. I think that looks okay. 8, 11, yeah, I remember that much. 9, 5, and 6, and then this. Okay, that seems okay. But I thought we did have some values up here. Well, 8.1 has a 2 on the seven plus line, 8.1. Well, there's a two there, 8.2. Yeah, uh, I, think, I think we've eliminated zeros and stuff like that. But on the other hand, I think, I think we have made progress. We're putting stuff in the table and we're definitely seeing it. They're somewhat unlikely values. You would think 1-1 one, one would not be easily confused. 2-3-4-4-4-3-4-3-4-4-4-4-3. Hmm. Um, okay, let's, let's sum vertically. 1, 3, 6, 9, 21, 22, 26, 27, 37, 38 to 4 minus 39 with the 0. Okay, there are 39 songs. 5, 17, 27, 31, 35, 39, 42, 43. Okay. <laughs> All righty. <clears throat> well, what? Okay, let's see. Where are we? I, I think we are plausibly getting stuff from our table. That, I wish I could just add up all these numbers and see if the total of all the numbers were the same, because I feel like it ought to be. But um, I my suspicion is if, I think the way we constructed our table, our original table, the my, my table one, my count or whatever it is, um, if it doesn't have a measure, it doesn't put it in. And then when you need it, it synthesizes it. Okay, so go to our subscript. Maybe that was the way to make that, populate that table. Okay, if you do row, measure, note number, and if we don't have that measure, we return zero. And if um, we don't have that note number, we return zero. And otherwise we return the value. Maybe we should do is just go through this. We know we know the number of measures. We know the max measures, right? The highest measure and the highest note number. We can use that in our table. Okay, so let's let's uh, do a replace algorithm refactoring. 
Okay, and then I do want to make one change. I want this to be the result. So instead of assigning it table equals, I want to return this type. Okay, we return that, and then I'm going to do the assignment at the call site down at the bottom here. Um, table table equals that. Okay. Um, I think that's going to make make life flow better. Okay. Shouldn't affect things. Now, I guess what I want to do in my test, right? If my theory is right, I should be able to make a test that fails. So my theory is if I uh, make songs of different lengths that something's going to go wrong. Okay, so let's see. Um, Okay, so if the measure is short, um, let's see, what are we checking? Zero, 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 three. Okay. And then one, zero, one, two. All right, let's, let's cut one, zero one three okay let's cut this out i think rochi no i think i want to do this um Let's do that. Now, song two, now we should have, no, how am I gonna mess this up? That just has counts of one versus zero. Measure one, note three. That's this, that last column of the second measure. What if we made that one? One should be two. Okay, I'm gonna try a different way to make these different. I'm gonna make the first measure longer than the second measure. Now we don't we don't need to check everything again here. Uh, let's just check row. Sorry, measure one note three should have F and G different. Measure one, note three, should have those counts. But measure one, sorry, two, off by one again. Okay, zero, one, two, these two should be okay. Then sub three, that should be a zero because the maximum note count is four. So zero, one, two, three should be a valid index. I think this is gonna blow up. Okay. I believe I've proven what I thought I would. <laughs> okay, so what I'm proposing then is build table. I think it should just run through all the subscripts. 
and create the items that way. Okay, so um, build count row, or sorry, build table. We're going to take the count table. No, what I want to do is for um, row number in zero dot dot less than table dot count. Okay. Um, so I need to make a count row. Number, yeah, okay, whatever. All right, so I've got the row number. I need to make Well, I need to make the measure number in zero dot dot less than highest measure. And the note number in zero dot dot less than highest note number. Okay, so now I can access my three things. Do I want these to be that? Okay. Well, I, I certainly want to, I want to produce note count. Okay, so I want to accumulate these things. Um, note sub, sorry, self sub row number, measure number, and note number. Okay, so I'm getting every note and I'm filling in zeros for ones that don't exist. Expected type note count. Oh no, this is not. This is just it. Okay, so I'm trying to get for a row, for a measure. No. Okay, let's call this counts. For a row, for a measure, for a note, what's your what's your count? And I get back an, an array of counts. Okay, now given an array of counts, I should be able to build a count, note count. Okay, so um, Note count with note. Counts. Okay. Now. Okay. This, this stuff is irrelevant, I think. Okay, so for, and I'll extract this as we get closer. All right, so given a, okay, row, measure, and notes, I build up the note count. Okay, well, I want to accumulate that too. So 
um, measures of note count starts out empty. Okay. And then um, we don't just want to calculate this. Let's let's append it. Measures dot, uh, dot append note count. Okay, so we've got for every row, for every measure, we've generated the note counts. Okay, so let's get this. Now, for this, we want the uh, rows is, what's our other thing? Row count? Count row. Count row starts out empty. I guess that's more of a bar. All right, so we got our count rows. Um, okay, and now we need to accumulate count rows every time we finish one of these. Um, we've got the measures, so we've calculated the measures. Now we want to append that. Uh, count, I'm going to call it rows, rows append measure, measures, okay, and now we have oh, we have row number, okay, we have to make um, Let measure counts equal measures, no, row count, <laughs> row. The header is uh, row info sub row number. The measure array is measures. And then this is measure counts. Okay, and we've got rows of count row. Okay, now we should be able to assign that to table. Except I've messed something up. Okay, well, let's let's assign it here. Table equals rows. Okay, and what's my note count rows has no subscripts. Row info. Note count rows has no subscript. Who is note count rows? Row info. Oh, I just have column headers. No. Row headers. Okay. Missing return. Okay, so let's just return rows. All right. I don't know. Better or worse? The nice thing is this self-subscript thing is the thing that figures out like if the measures counts is too low and the this is and that's it it makes them all the same and gives us 
lists of stuff. Okay, so my claim is this should pass, including that out of range we had. <laughs> oh, and it fails on the other one. Wow. Okay, let's, let's look at table. That's quite a bit more than I count on. Row info. Oh, table dot table. Zero values. Did I not assign something? Let's check this other test. It's going to fail in the same place. Yes. Okay. Nothing. Well, I just did a lot of work. Why isn't it working? Okay, so rows to, st oh, that's the wrong thing. We want count table. Count table dot count, table dot count is always zero because it started out zero, so Okay, and then this is independent of the table, and this is independent. Okay, let's try again. Yay. All right, uh, let's commit that. Um, build the table using the subscript operator which automatically gives zero for um, absent entries. Okay. That's good. Now let's run it. Whoops. Take our 39 tune file and turn on quantize and melody. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm obviously not counting the right something. Everything's a six. Well, six is suspiciously the same as the number of measures. Self sub row under note number. Okay, let's see what we're. Row number, measure number, note number. That seems right. And the counts. We're clearing it each time. Hmm. All right, let's um, let's break here for starters. Don't know if it'll bring it back. Yeah, nothing's changed theoretically, so it doesn't have to. Let's turn this off. Okay. Um, Let's look at rows. Mm. 
Lots of zeros. Oh, is our view? We didn't. Okay. Man, it is meant for no account. All right. This should be working, though. So I should be able to do this for each note count. Um, measure dot note. And we get the count. Yeah. Int conform to identifiable. Oh, we're not going to get that. Oh, I don't want to make these counts have to be identifiable. Come on. I really would like to just say, hey, just do it. <laughs> um, oh, I don't want to do that. But I know that something's, something's true in that, right? I mean, we saw that we have seven the four each up here still. No, probably not far away. Yeah, four each. LMS must conform. To identifiable or provide an ID parameter. Well, I don't think I can. Okay, I'm gonna lie for a minute. Uh, dot slash self. Okay, I'm saying just treat each number as its own identifier, but okay, um. Let's go for help. Okay, so we have a Swift UI for each over, uh, how about array of int? That might be interesting. Yeah, that's kind of... Kind of what I was afraid of. Okay. I mean, maybe we can, maybe we can do this yet, but... Okay, create views in a loop. No, that's not... these constant things see this one you can identify because they're unique strings yeah unique enum values he's wrapped them with a uuid i mean that's kind of what we're gonna have to do okay um uh. All right, let's just say text verbatim measure dot no dot count. 
don't know if I can use text without a string. Is that really okay? No. <laughs> Here I'm pushing it down when I think. Okay, apologize and get rid of that. View. Get back to where all six is. Okay. Oh, what's going on there? Forty-eight. Oh, yeah, there's only so many entries. Okay, I think. <sighs> okay, well, hopefully this is the last <laughs> layer of stuff on here. Okay, note count table. This can go Alright, so now the actual ints, we're going to have to make those identified. Public struct, um, my count is identifiable. Okay, and then it's got a count that's an int, and he's got to have an ID. Public let ID. I think I can make this an int. And my, my thought is, um, this becomes my count. These names, ugh. count row, this is probably count measure. And, and count note. Okay, let's, well, I think that might help me make sense of things. Okay, so this becomes count measure. Oh, geez, don't do that. Yeah, now it's all messed up, okay. Uh, let's make sure the tests still run. Oh, because I screwed it up. Valerie declaration of count row. Nope, oh, no, he caught on. No, he didn't. Measure contains no count. Count row. Yeah, let's quit this and start it again. No reason to waste that bandwidth. Okay, let's get Xcode back. Count row. Oh, no, that is... Oh, huh. It changed the text on us. Uh, count measure. And this is count measure. Who else is going to get messed up? Count row. Well, we don't call this anymore, so let's not worry about that one. Count row. Oh man, he messed up a lot of stuff. Let's see, can we? There's the view. How different is this? My count, okay. Note count.
Measure.note. A sync view. Okay, count tables, what I care about. Okay, it was note count. I'm trying to name that to count measure, so that's okay. But these note count build count row commented out fine. Note count should be count measure. Okay, I think note count, let's see, this one is count row, this should be count measure, note counts, okay, have I, I'm not calling my count yet, so Okay, so let's build this again and see if we got this straight. Yeah. Append measures is count measure. That is what you call a bad refactoring. That shouldn't have been allowing me to make that name change to a name already used in the same scope, all right? So a little refactoring bug there in the tool. <laughs> Not that it was great that I chose that name or mistyped it, but okay, testing. Good, okay, I'm gonna delete this since nobody needs it. All right, now, Count row, count measure, and then this is count node. Nobody uses it yet. Okay. Now the reason I put int is I could I could create this name as I'm going. Um, let's see, let ID equals zero. And then every time I append, I do one. Let's see, that's the note numbers. Right, counts is array of int. I'm gonna to have to make that the new type. All right, and I don't think I have a smooth way to do this. Okay, I want this to be count note. I should get some complaints. Oh, there's one. Cannot convert counts. Right, because this should be a count note. Is empty. And then I should convert this to a count note. ID is something, count is this. Well, this is why I'm making ID up here. ID should be ID, and then once I've appended it, I should add to it. Okay, so I'm just counting these individual ones. Uh, I guess it's good I go to d immutable by default, but not always helpful. All right, but I'm just making a count of the in in um, 
of the different counters, okay? I'm just incrementing by one for each one, so everybody's going to have a unique ID when they come here. Um, and you know what? I almost think this is better. Change the ID, and I know it's changed. If I do it down here, it's like, next time I get here, I know it'll be changed. Mm, okay, I'm, I'm happier like this. All right, now there should be some people complaining. Uh, sync view, our, our average tunes, wherever our view went. Oh, we commented that out. Okay, it's not sync view. When I restart, oh, here we go. Uh, I don't know how I get these multiple tabs sometimes. Average sync view. Now, we shouldn't need this. We should be able to go through measure dot, whoops, measure dot note. Um, count row measure. Note, I guess this is note count, maybe. Note count, we should get note count dot dot count. If I'm remembering everything correctly. Okay, so I'm, well, let's make this public too. I'm getting access to a count note from measure. Okay, so count row, measure, uh, and note. I, I guess I could live with calling this note, note.count. Okay. All right, let's try this. <laughs> Scalin, turn on quantizer, turn on this, and check. Oh, that's more promising. Zero, 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 one, zero, zero, two, three, zero, three, twelve, one, four, one, ten. Zero, 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 one, zero, zero, two, three, zero, three, twelve, one, four, one, ten. Okay. And the only difference is down on these negatives, this one stops at minus three, and this one doesn't. Okay, I'm, I'm happy we're at this stage. Okay, and this is, um, this transformation, awkward as it is, I think is in keeping with how, how Swift UI likes it, I guess. I want to say it that way. Now, I'm kind of all over the place on these published and all this stuff. There's there's definitely work to do. Um, let's let's record that. But we've we've done that. Okay, so let's catch this tune 2302. And this is a grid-based report. Okay, and we've made indices not fixed size. Okay, oh, we got cleanup and stuff to do. I, I guess this is kind of the top level. Okay, um, but let's commit this. Well, Okay, so we made um, note count table publish each level of its table for benefit of Swift UI. Now, okay, golly.
All right, I'm going to change that one to a rest symbol. I'm sorry, I just have to. Uh, let's find less than. It's got to be in here somewhere. How about text? Note, count rows. Wait, somebody should be... Okay, that is it. Yeah, this thing I want... Um, insert... That guy. Okay, I'm... I'm not sure if any tests might be looking at it. Oh, we can take the small one. And I don't care about quantizing. I just want to see the symbol. Uh-oh. Okay. Oh, there it is. Rest. Okay. I can live with it. Okay, interesting. Okay, so we got three versions of this thing now. This one... I don't like how it's done that. It it doesn't include row six, row six minus or seven minus. This one does, but it also includes four, three, two, one. All right, and then this one, uh, we start the new table... Zero. Oops, how many tables I got here? Okay. I think we have multiple versions of our tables. Okay, so seven, six, minus. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Seven minus six minus, and so on, minus one, zero. Okay, there's our rest. And then we get a whole other table. All right, let's, let's take out that other table. All right, so I think we've done the job we set out to with this one. Whether it's all as good as it can be, it's different. Then we have the fixed sized one. Okay, where is your pair? Okay. Now, do we just have the one? Scroll view proxy, grid spacing. Okay. Oh, and then this one. I think we've convinced ourselves we're okay now. So we don't need three versions. Okay. Alrighty, let's make sure that still looks good. Or as good as it did. Quantize in this end view. Now I know I got a suspicion that the time it's taking to do that is all those UUID calls. But, okay, we should be going out to not 50, but whatever the co uh, songs demand. Okay, and let's, let's take this one and make sure it's somewhat smaller. And it's also 48. Okay, I guess we just picked one that was that long. Do we have sixes? No, we just have four. Okay. Um, I'm not so sure why we're, let's, let's put a spacer before the done button. I think we tried this and didn't really do what I thought it should.
Yeah, there's no space there. Okay, I'm not quite sure about that. <sighs> All right, um, I'm not quite ready to fool around with the looks of things. All right, but I am happy enough for now. I mean, the contents look okay. It's, I'm not saying there's not room to improve, but I think the the room at this point, it, it's looks and stuff. So let's, let's see what we can do with our code for now. Oh, I just don't know. Okay, what's what's bugging me? Well, b build table is a little awkward. It, it it's long. I mean, I don't think it's impossible, but I could believe that if you extracted out this stuff, it might become more readable. So let's let's try that. Um well, okay, no, I've got two things going on. The other thing is, well, three things. I don't think note count table itself needs to be observable, and unless note count table is our name for this new structure we built. Because that is where all the action is. Count row. I think this should be pitch. Or scale degree is what it really is. Um, let's call it scale degree count. Scale degree counts. Okay, and then this is measure counts. I guess I'm taking the low hanging fruit and this is note counts. Everything should be good. Oh, interesting. Did we not run those before? This should be dot count. Because recall we had to add that identifiable thing to it. I think. Okay, what's going on? Oh, this may not. Oh, okay. Yeah, I said that should break something and it didn't because I didn't run the tests. Okay, um, change row header, row header name for rests. Um, we renamed miscellaneous count. Oh, 
Constructs. All right. Note count. Okay, note count table. That's definitely better. Scale degree dot measure. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. Dot note dot count. Okay. Now I kinda think Well, okay, this I think belongs on here now. Okay, so we've got the the table. When that thing changes, we definitely want to redraw stuff. Now everybody else. I mean these things get set. We don't even look at these really, do we? Who's looking at them? Column headers. Oh, that's column headers. Yeah, that is different. Do these matter? I don't think they do. Um, because they only get changed. All this stuff is in response to populate. And the real thing that happens is table gets built. And that's what everybody cares about. The rest of this... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I keep coming back to, I think there's two classes in here. One is, one is building up the table and capturing some of this information. And the other is, is providing the info once it's been calculated. And he is really just accessing through. I mean, that's kind of, he's there for the, the view it's handy for the view to do that. Um, column headers, we're looking at that in this in this view. So that's that's also kind of an output. Um, measure and that's dependent. That only counts after it's built. Only makes sense after it's built. I mean, I. Yeah, like what if there were an object that just held the table and the column headers, and even that could be programmed into just a, a hard-coded array of strings. Um, and then all this other stuff. What about this? Who uses this? Tests. Yeah, that's... I don't even know if that's really accurate. Because this now is in the, it's in the scale degree counts, so we don't really care. I mean, they, every row, every row puts its own row header in, so um, the, the table as a whole doesn't need to know it. Now, did we check row headers down here? I think we did. Um, yeah, row header. And actually, I don't think that would, that's really a redundant test. Okay. Uh, given that it's happening up here with the same sort of G's and F's, all G's and F's. Okay. 
Um, this test, I believe, is not relevant. And this is no longer public. Okay, well, that's something. This, I don't believe, is public. Note count table, average 200 report. What is this? Generate report. Okay, this class is going to go away. We need to make that on our to do. Drop old report. Okay. Um, Average to report, not needed anymore. Okay, fix myself, switch to a good risk report. Well, it's, I think what we're doing is more uh, refactor, note, count, table, split. Okay, well, that's kind of what we're asking ourselves. Now, maybe this, okay, I just, I'm kind of running through options in my head. What, what could, what could the class do? I mean, what if the whole job of this thing is to calculate counts and uh, it doesn't produce an observable object. It just produces the table. Maybe it, produces the table and the the column headers. And if it gave you that, hmm, I don't even know if the column headers, hmm. Okay, if it gave you the column headers, what if those were both structs and then the owning object would be the tune report, uh, sorry, the, the sync view, average sync view. It would say calculate, it would say those are my state and I'm gonna do something to calculate them. And if state changes, table changes or headers change, I'm going to redraw, and I think he could make that stick. Okay, so that's a long function. Okay, so that means all these should be private, I think. Tests are sneaking in and peeking. Okay, I, I mean, I guess that's that. Yeah. Now, who uses this? The report, the table, and the tests. Okay, let's let's put that on the top of our list for tomorrow. Drop the report. Okay, and then um, the refactor. Well, um, I think we want to say. Um, hide non-public methods and we want to ask um, make make note count table produce the table and row headers store that as a state in average sync view All right, and if we did that, you know, I kind of want to fix this little thing. This UI thing is bugging me because I've been doing this so much now. Um, 
I want to get to a good point here. I think maybe that is before we do the cleanup of the look, um, let's take a break and clean up this, this UI thing. Okay. So we'll pick up there tomorrow. We'll, we'll drop this report. We don't need anymore. We'll refactor the count table. And, um, I think that'll give us a good moment where we could do this cleanup on the UI. And um, go back and figure out report stuff. Maybe maybe UI on the report, followed by this mode calculation, and then maybe maybe we'll do this. I don't know. All right. Well, thanks for joining today. Uh, next time is tomorrow, one to three thirty p.m. Eastern time, or six to eight thirty p.m. UTC, and uh, we'll pick up here. Thanks again. Have a good night. Bye bye.